Good morning. We are on day 97 following the leap year Bible reading, April the 6th of 2020. The world is definitely at a different place than any of the other years I've ever read through this Bible, having this coronavirus spreading the land. <clears throat> so, again, I always look to guidance and encouragement through the daily reading, and he never, never, ever, ever disappoints. It's amazing how it fits our lives right now today and what we're going through today. So many i have gotten notices just this morning of um, loved ones being laid off and concerned about their jobs. And uh, over the weekend got notified of the very first person that I don't know them, but somebody I know <clears throat> has a nephew uh, on a ventilator with the virus. So <clears throat> here we are. Here we are, April the 6th of 2020. Moses knows that his time is short. He, he God's already told him. Now, I think in tomorrow's reading, he'll be telling him again how short his time is, but... Moses has that sense of urgency inside of him that he, I mean, these are people he's cared for for 40 years. I mean, he's been through all the ups and the downs, and you want to talk about going through some bad stuff. I mean, you know, there was a time when the ground opened up and swallowed <clears throat> many of the people. There was another time that I mean, just so much death. It, it watched so much death in those 40 years. And so here he is. He's right at the Jordan River, knowing that right over there is the land of the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And it's, it's like he's wanting to take everything that's in him and pour it out to them. I mean, I, I think about you know, being on my deathbed and the things I'd want to say to my loved ones, to the people that I love and that I've cared for and that have cared for me and how much I'd want to pour out and the things I'd want to have said. You know, yesterday's reading, oh my goodness. If you guys have not read yesterday, I can't begin to tell you how many times in my life and how many different circumstances I go back to Deuteronomy 28 um, verses 1 through 14 to see God's heart for his people we are his people to see what he wants for us you know there are those out there that want to believe that this virus is from God and it's God's judgment well you know I've got news for you this book tells me that Jesus took all of our judgment he took on all of our sin and Deuteronomy 28 shows what God wants for us. And, and then it continues on into April 6th into the reading, Deuteronomy 29 and 30. And he just continues to tell us that we're blessed. We're his people. We're his chosen ones. We're the delight uh, of God. We, we, we are his delight. He, he loves us and he blesses us and it's just what it's what we choose to see, even in the midst of what's going on. We, we, we can choose to see, and to feed the negativity, or we can choose to see, the blessings, and the blessings of God. And you know, this book, as you're reading it all the way through, it teaches us almost on a daily basis, to recite our blessings. In today's Psalms, it's there. Um, it tells us um, that, that, we should, that we should remind ourselves, verse th uh, 11, they forgot what he had done, the great wonders he had shown them, the miracles he did for their ancestors. For he divided the sea and led them through, making the water stand up like walls. In the daytime, he led them by a cloud and all night by a pillar of fire. 
we forget, we forget the good things that God's done for us when, when tragedy strikes, when a, a, a resistance comes, when a virus comes. We, we focus on the virus instead of focusing on the good things. You know, I have a home that I can come to. I, I'm so blessed. I have warm beds that I sleep in at night. I have food on my table. I've got clothes that I can wear. I've got fresh air that I can step out my back door and breathe. We still have electricity. I mean, a friend of mine and I were talking last night about what would this be like going through what we're going through if we didn't have electricity? What if it had cut off our, our ability to have electric, or what if it had cut off our ability to have uh, fresh water to drink? Why, I mean, there's always something worse. There's There always is something worse. But I just want to take the reading today and kind of highlight the things that spoke to me today, where we're at on this April 6th of 2020. Um, I'll go to chapter 30. There's, it, it, you know, <laughs> Donna tells me that everything's my favorite, and it is. I mean, every time I read, it's my new all-time favorite, but I, I mentioned that the blessings in chapter 28, I go back to a lot, but also what it tells us in chapter 30, De Deuteronomy 30, I set before you this day, life and, life and death, blessings and curses, and then it goes on to tell us what the answer is, choose life, choose life. Every single day we have a choice, that's what we're talking about. We can choose what our mind is focused on. We can choose what our mind is focused on. We can choose to see the blessings or we can choose to live in fear. Um, so anyway, I'll start in, in verse 30, um, verse 2. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, and if you obey with, your heart, with all your heart, all your soul, all the commands I've given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. I realize and I know um, that there are people that's losing big time right now, losing their jobs. <coughs> <coughs> I stopped and I thought about it. You know, all the things I just mentioned that I'm so grateful for, uh, what if it was all gone? What if my house was gone? What if I lost my cars? What if and and this is what I this is what came to my mind as I'm reading this. <coughs> Excuse me. It's all his anyway. It's I don't own it. I mean, I'm a steward of it. God's asked me to take care of this beautiful home we live in, and He's asked me to take good care of the clothes He's given me, and He's asked me to take good care of the hearts that I get to minister with, and he's asked me to take good care of, but it's all his. And when we stop having ownership, when we stop having ownership, and we see ourselves as stewards, it will help the sting if indeed it goes away. So the day Tom and I walked into this house, we declared that it was God's house. We wouldn't even have had it if it hadn't been for the miracles of God. I mean, Tom and I in and of ourselves is not capable of that. God made a way. And if it goes away, I release it back to God. And then I have these promises to stand on. This is a promise. In that time, you and your children return to the Lord your God. And if you obey with all your heart, with everything in him today, April the 6th, 2020, I want to do what he wants me to do this day. I want to obey. And because I want to, I have faith I will obey. With all my heart and all my soul, all the commands that he's given me this day. And then here's my promise. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. Whatever we lose, God will restore. 
He will have mercy on you and gather you back from all the nations where he has scattered you. Verse 5, the Lord your God will return, to, return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you even more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. Wow. Wow. The Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul and so you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies and all those who hate and persecute you. So, you know, there was a time in my life that I literally had to pray, Lord, help me to love you more. Help me to, to recognize your love. Help me to allow you to love me more. Lord, I want to fall more in love with you. And this is the basis for it. It says right here that the Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul. If you're not there today, simply bow your head and ask him. Ask him to help you get to that place to where there's nothing else in your life more important than him. And then verse 9, which repeats what he told us yesterday. Again, I'm telling you, if you haven't read Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14, you'll never truly know how your father God feels about you without reading Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. <clears throat> and right now, Deuteronomy 39, the Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. Verse 10, the Lord your God will delight in you. Wow, these are things we need to hear. April the 6th of 2020, that if, if I go in there right now this minute and I flip on the television or I turn on the radio, what am I gonna hear? I am going to hear about doom and gloom. I'm going to hear about the inexplainable spread of this virus. I'm gonna hear about how the death toll I mean, they're pre predicting for us that these next two weeks will be the worst weeks. I'm declaring that these next two weeks will be the best weeks. I, I just refuse to choose to listen to the doom and gloom. I'm not going to listen to the doom and gloom. I'm not ignoring facts. I'm isolated in my home. I'm not going out. And, and guess what? I'm going to stay in even more the next two weeks. I'm going to use the wisdom that God's given me, but I am not doing it in fear. I will not do it in fear. I read these words, and it's like, what do I have to fear? If God be for me, who can be against me? The Lord, my God, will make me successful in everything I do. The Lord, my God, takes delight in me. Oh, wow. And then this is where I really want to get to. Um, I, in my life, I have some very strong guiding scriptures that when I don't know what to do, I, I go back and I rely on them. And Deuteronomy 30, 19 is one of those. Today, today, God is speaking to us and saying, I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. <laughs> Today, he's given us a choice. Today, April the 6th, 2020. And then we wake up tomorrow and he gives us the same choice. And we wake up the next day and we get the same choice. God's given us the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. And then he tells us the answer. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life. Now listen to this part. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants, that covers our kids and our grandkids and our grandkids' grandkids. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. He wants all of you. He wants to clean up that potty mouth you have. He wants to... He wants to, to clean up the bad habits you have. He wants, to, he wants to make you holy. It's his holiness that lives inside of you, not our holiness. It, 
I mean, it's his righteousness. He imputes his righteousness inside of us. And then as we focus on him instead of us, his righteousness rises up and, and we can't help but clean up our potty mouth. We can't help but clean up our thoughts. We can't help but start living righteously. Not perfect. He doesn't call us to perfection. Oh, I thank God every day he doesn't call me to be perfect. Ooh, words to live by. Today, I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants will live. And then we go into Luke chapter 11. You Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you're filthy. See, that's just what we were talking about. I mean, we started it all off by saying that if we return to the Lord, that he'll give us, restore all of our fortunes. <laughs> that if we make the choice to follow him, that he'll, that he'll um, uh, allow us to possess the land that he had once given us. That if we'll ask him to help us love him more, he'll help us. And that as we love him, hmm, <laughs> As we love him, and as we grow to love him, it's easier and easier to choose life instead of death. And then, and then he goes, and he, then he sets out to tell us how. The Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you're filthy. So clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor. I've been talking for weeks that in this period of recession, uh, in this period of this virus going around, in this period of time when you don't know if you may have a job or not, that we ought to be giving. It's the time that we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow, but that we ought to be giving. So clean the inside by giving. Isn't that funny that, that, or isn't that something that he's talking about the filthiness of what's on the inside of the Pharisees, and then he tells them the way you clean that up is by giving. By giving. Hmm. Verse 42, for you're careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore justice and the love of God. And then, and then lest you should doubt, here it is. Yes, you should tithe but do not neglect the more important things. He's talking about giving to the poor here. Yes, you should tithe, but don't neglect the more important things. Do we tithe or do we feed that one that doesn't have a meal this day? God will guide you. He'll tell you. He'll, he'll guide you into all truth. <clears throat> oh, and then I, I love this scripture in verse uh, 46. For you crush people with unbearable religious demands. See, the religious would demand that you tithe before you ever give to somebody out there that's hurting. They would demand it, that you tithe first. He tells us to tithe, but not, not at, the, at the neglect of more important things. For you crush people with unbearable religious demands and you never lift a finger to ease the burdens. You, you can't get past what's being said today. You can't get past what is written. Hmm. In verse uh, 52, you don't enter the kingdom yourselves and you prevent others from entering. Oh Lord, don't let me keep somebody else from entering in. Let not my actions at all cause somebody else from entering in. And then he starts uh, telling them in chapter 12 to beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. The yeast of the Pharisees. The yeast permeates the dough. The yeast is what causes it to rise. The yeast will overtake all substances. And he's telling us to beware of the yeast of the Pharisees their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed. You know, there are those of you out there that have secrets and you've got things that you don't want other people to know. 
this is the time that you get it out and you and, and and instead of hiding it you just go to your backyard and look up to heaven and and just get it all out to God and just reveal it all to God it's going to be revealed anyway the time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Mm -mm -mm. And then in my column, as I read Luke chapter 12, verse 6, I wrote the words 2020 coronavirus. What is the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins? Yes, God does not forget us. Yet God does not forget a single one of them. He doesn't forget a single sparrow. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Mm. Love how he encourages us right smack dab in the middle of what's going on in our lives today. You guys have a magnificent Monday.